I'm on a roll with Topaz Studio 2. This is episode number 52 of my Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 52 of the Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Thank you so much for joining me again. I couldn't resist opening up Topaz Studio 2 again. Now, I always like to refer to it as my creative toolbox, and I hope you do too. It's such a great piece of software when you really want to get creative. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. I went ahead and duplicated my background layer because I never like to work in the background layer, but I'm going to need it because I may tone down the effect that I get and I'll lower the opacity on the Topaz Studio 2 layer. Plus, it's never a good idea to work on your background layer. Now, let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to come up to Filter, and I'll click on Topaz Studio 2, and we'll launch it and get started. By the way, I also have a link for this image, the stock image, so you can go ahead and download it and follow along with me. And if you're doing that, you're going to probably want to save this out as a look. And if you do that, you can use that on similar types of images like this, you know, where you have a nice clean background. There's a really nice painterly effect that gets applied to that clean background, which is kind of nice. So you'll probably want to use it again. I've already made a look, but I'm going to start from scratch to show you how I got to the finished result. And then at the end of the edit here, I'm going to show you what it looks like on another image. I'll apply that look to it just so you can get an idea of what kind of result you'll get with similar type images. I'm only going to be using four different filters. There'll be four unique filters and it's a real simple edit and we'll start out. We'll come up here to add filter with an impression filter, which gives you that painterly type look. And already you can see it looks like a painting but we're not done. I just want to stop and say something right here. One of the things that I really enjoy about Topaz Studio 2 is you're not going to get a canned look unless you just go ahead and throw like an impression filter on and you do nothing to it. But for instance, in the impression filter, we have all these different brush styles that we can use. We have all these different adjustments that we can make. And that is the same for all of the filters and you will not get like an Instagram filter look you're going to have your own unique style that you come up with and I think that is so cool and please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below like what you think about the power of Topaz Studio 2 and all the wonderful things you can create with it by the way in the description below I'm going to list some uh, Facebook groups that you can join the Topaz impression group which you see here uh, the Topaz Labs community group. And I always post all my videos up on these groups every time I put out a new video, by the way. But it's a good place to interact, to post your artwork, to get inspired, to let Topaz know, hey, we want you to keep making Topaz Studio too. Let them know what you like. Let them know what you're upset about. And, you know, this is a good way to communicate with Topaz. So I will list the groups in the description below. And if you're so inclined, go ahead and join some of these Topaz users groups on Facebook and tell them Dave Kelly sent you. Okay, if you want to. But anyway, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is pick a brush stroke. And, you know, you can click through these strokes and see how they interact with your image. Okay, and they're all going to give you a little different effect. And let's click on this one here. Yeah, see how that's a lot different. Now, you see some of this streaky look through here. The reason you're seeing that is because whenever you're doing paintings, the canvas underneath sometimes shows through. And you could sometimes that's very effective in an image. But if you don't want to see that, you can come down to the very bottom. And I always tell you this when you watch my videos. Come to Texture, open up Texture, and... Just come the whole way down, see where it says solid background, click on original, and those little flecks go away. And you can also change the color of that background as well. I'll show you that in another video at some point. But let me find the brush I want, and I believe it's this one right here, type 10. Yeah, it's this one right here. This is the brush that I want. Now, let's start making some adjustments. So as far as the number of strokes, you have three choices, low, medium, or high. They're all going to give you different looks. So if I go to low, you can see I get a more abstract look. And that's kind of cool. I really like that. I click on high. It's going to be more like 
kind of like the original look. It's still going to have a painterly look, but I think I'm using medium here, and I'm referring to my notes here. And then we're going to find a brush size. Now, you can change the size of your brush. When it's larger, see how it's just more, looks a little more sloppier, because you're using like a really big brush, you know, like that two-inch Bob Ross brush, you know what I mean? So, but you can go with a big brush or you can go with a smaller brush. In my case, I want to use a brush right around this size, a 044 and then this next step is kind of important for this look I'm working with here, and that's paint volume. Check this out when I pull up paint volume. You see all that nice little painterly look that's happening in the background, which is kind of nice here. Now, I'm not going to make it that high because I'll bring it out more later on with some other filters. So keep watching. This is a step-by-step -step process, okay? And it takes me a while to come up with these looks. You know, the look I came up for this image took me about a half an hour to create but you know, that's part of the joy of editing. So you really want to get into the whole experience. It's a lot of fun, or at least it should be, but just get into that experience playing around with all these different adjustments. Okay. So the next thing I did was played around with the stroke rotation. Now, if you pull this one, you can see the strokes start going in weird and different directions, but it's amazing the results you can get by playing around with this stroke rotation. I ended up right here at like a 0.6. Now, it doesn't matter which order you make these adjustments in. I'm going to go to the paint opacity next, and I like this one a lot because this adjustment is the amount of paint that's applied, and you can see as I really pull it up, you see a lot of paint being put down and I gave this a lot of paint I went up to like a 93 because that's what I felt I wanted and I really like it now you as an artist you decide how much you want you may not want as much as I do and that's cool just put the amount down that you want or don't apply any of the paint opacity it's totally up to you just a few more adjustments I'm going to adjust the stroke width to like a minus 30 and then on the length I'm going to extend the length of the stroke to 0.24 I believe it is and next I'm going to add a little bit of smudge now smudge is a really cool slider watch what happens when I really drag this to the right see how the image starts getting that smudgy look which can be very effective too. Now you may say, you know what? I'm stopping right here because I really love that. So whatever you're feeling, do it, right? And I'm going to bring mine down to like a 0.09. What's right? What's wrong? It's really all up to you. And that's all I'm doing. And if you click this eye, you can see here's the before the impression filter. And here is the after and everything is non-destructive here in Topaz Studio too. So whenever you add another filter, they all interact with each other. So let's add another filter. This is going to be a precision contrast. Now I must say this, precision contrast for me anyway, is a great companion for the impression filter as well as the precision detail. And I'll be using that as well. But let's work with the precision contrast. Now remember I said when I was working with the impression filter that I kept the paint volume back that's giving us that painterly look in the white background because I knew I was going to bring it up with a precision contrast filter. So I held it back a little bit. Now the contrast filter lets you adjust micro areas of contrast, low, medium, and high. So let me work with micro first. I'm going to bring the micro up to right about here and then I'll work with low. I'll pull this low up a lot so you can see what it's doing. Can you see the effect it's doing? And experiment. Don't be afraid to play with these sliders because you're never going to know what you want until you see it. See, that looks really cool. But that's not the look I went for today. But I'll remember that for next time. I'm going to bring this to like a 0.24. I just want to bring out a little bit of detail in these flowers. But I'm also getting that um, painterly background to pop up a little bit as well and now with the medium let's drag it to the right i'm going to take it up to right here 0.68 and the other thing i want to do we also have lighting in here i'm going to work with the midtones i'm going to pull my midtones back a little bit because these light areas of the flowers are a little bit too hot so when i pull this midtone back it's going to help those out can you see that and I'm going to bring that back to like uh, negative 22, I believe it is. And I'm also going to pull the highlight back a good bit. And I'll pull that back to like around a minus 79. And all I'm doing there is uh, taming the whites in the flowers back. So that gives me a nice effect. But I think 
That's all I did. Or no, it isn't. I did bring up some saturation, the overall saturation. I tried vibrance and I didn't like what it was doing, but I brought the overall saturation up to like a, like around a 0.19 right there. Just a little bit of extra contrast. Now let's shut the precision contrast off. Here is the before. And now here is the after, and I really like the direction. See how that precision contrast has brought out some of the details in this painterly look. The next filter I want to add is a basic adjustment. And here all I want to do is lighten it up a little bit. I'm going to take the exposure up to around like a 0.20 just to bring a little bit of lightness back. Because remember, I tamed down these highlights. Now I want to bring back a little overall exposure to the image. And then I want to bring out a little bit more detail by pulling this clarity adjustment up to like around a 0.35 right there. Just to give me a little bit more detail popping through. And now I think my highlights are getting a little hot again. So I'm going to take my highlight adjustment and pull it back to like right around here. Like a point, a minus 0.48. And that's all I want to do. Now, at any time, you can shut these layers off by clicking on the eye. Here's the before the basic adjustment, and here is the after. Okay, one more adjustment. Well, what's it going to be? Now, remember I said my two favorite filters to work with in conjunction with the impression filter is precision contrast and precision detail. So that's next. Now, I don't want to add detail everywhere. I just want to add it on these orange flowers and on these two white flowers with the yellow centers. So what I'm going to do is, now we can work with overall detail, shadow detail, or highlight. I mainly work with overall detail, and that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to take the overall small detail and bump it up to right around a 0 0.29, 0 0.30. And then the medium, I'm going to take it up a little bit. Now I'll take it up a lot so you can really see how aggressive you can be here and just remember these things you can if you really want to pop a lot of detail you can really get it here and again this work works really well with the impression filter but on the uh, medium it's going to be for me right today a 0.17 and as far as large not much there i'll pull this way up so you can really see what it's doing and i'm just going to add a little bit of this and it's going to be right around a 0.10 right there and that's all I want to do here. Now, here's the before, and here's the after. But I don't want it everywhere, so I'm going to use a layer mask. So I'm going to click on this layer mask icon, and right now here we can see the layer mask. Click the three dots and invert it, so that hides it from everything. Now we have a bunch of different tools we can work with. I'm going to work with a brush, but the tools inside of Topaz Studio 2 are phenomenal for working with layer masks. Okay, and we also have this edge aware technology, which is switched on right now, which is great. We can adjust the radius. You can see the size I'm getting there. I'm going to make it about that size. We can adjust the softness. I won't make it quite as soft, but right around like a 0.30. And then this transparency slider is very important. Right now we have black, right? So we want to paint with white. And we can have various degrees of lightness when we drag the slider to the right. You see how it's changing different tones of gray till I get to solid white. And you can... Put this anywhere you want and you'll get various amounts of the effect. But I want the full amount of the effect. So I'm going to paint on this flower right here. And you can see the red overlay. Give it a second. And there's the detail. Isn't that great? I'm going to add some of that detail to this flower up here. And then the two white flowers right here. I don't want detail pu pulled out everywhere. And do I? And I think I may want this flower over here as well. I'm going to add some of the detail on that too. And I may pull that back. Now, here's how I can pull that back. Take this transparency slider. I'm going to take it back about halfway and just paint over that again. And that way, the effect will not be as strong. As you can see, it's not as strong right now. And if you look over here, now you can see it's like a gray shade compared to these white shades, which are getting the full effect. I said that was the last filter, but I was wrong. There is one more filter. Sorry about that. Let's click Add Filter. 
and let's go to HSL color tuning. And there's just two adjustments here. I want to take the orange, so I'm going to click on this orange block, and I just want to bump up that orange saturation. Not too much. I'm thinking right around there looks pretty good. And then I want to click on the green block, and I want to pull back on the green saturation a little wee bit to like a minus 36 right there just to tone that green down a little bit now here's the before the hsl and here's the after but i like how the uh, saturation came up a bit also in these spent petals laying on the surface here if you followed with me so far it's a good idea to save this out as a look so just come up to save look click on that and give it a name like i called mine uh, flowers in vase and then I went ahead and clicked OK. I've already saved it, so I'm going to click Cancel. Now let's go ahead and save this out. All we need to do is click Accept. That'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. Now remember I said I wanted to pull back on this effect a little bit because I feel it's a little too strong. So I'm just going to take this opacity and pull it back to, you know, maybe right around here, I think. Like around to 78. And here's my overall before image, and here's after my painterly look, which I really like a lot. Now remember, I saved that out as a look, so let's come to this image. I've already duplicated the background layer. I'll call this one TS2 for Topaz Studio 2. Let's launch Topaz Studio 2 again. And then we'll add that look. I'll show you how to add a look. All you need to do is come over here. Instead of adding filter, click on Add Look. And you'll find your looks under a category called My Looks. And if you click this, you'll see a bunch of different looks. A bunch of looks come loaded with uh, Topaz Studio 2. But whenever you save a look, they'll be in the My Looks category. And I called mine, I believe, Flowers in Vase. Right here, Flowers in Vase. So let's click on that. And we can see there it is. Now, it's a little strong, but no big deal. I can take the amount and pull this back a little bit if I want to, which I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to pull that back a little bit and click Apply. And when I click Apply, you'll see I have this group called Flowers and Vase. And here's the opacity that I just pulled back right there. That's for the group. But then we could come back to any of these filters, like the Impression Filter, and change things up, the Precision Contrast, whatever you want, and alter things whatever you want to do and then when you're done just click accept but just that easy when you have a look you can get that signature look on another image so here is the before and here's the after now if that's still too strong you also have this opacity you can pull back just a little bit more and I might just pull this back to like oh, right there, 92. So here is before the painterly look and here is the after. So there's that same effect on another image. But see, this was a nice, just a light background, a white background, but we have these painterly strokes in the background, which is really nice. Well, there it is, everyone. That was episode number 52 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing. <laughs>